Hi there, welcome to the ultimate Pit of Undying daily quest guide that explains everything you need to know to have an easy time and first try every encounter each day and every day. My name is Langley and the first thing I want to share with you is some basic information that you might need in order to have a smooth time. In case you are here for only certain boss mechanics, please make sure you use the timestamps and jump to the section immediately. Let's start with your in-game options. For most fights, especially if you are new, you want to see the effects. This is because most bosses will glow in a specific color to indicate that they are doing something special and you have to react at that moment to complete a mechanic successfully. To be able to see this in-game, head to your options and go to display settings and click on the left on effects. Following on the effect opacity, make sure that the slider is somewhat at or over 50. Then back on the top left, go to performance settings and click on optimization. Scroll down and you should be able to see effect optimization toggle. In case it is enabled, make sure it is prioritizing the effects more than the performance, so the slider should be more towards the left side than the right. These settings should make it that you see the enemy glowing and you will have an easier time to know what's up. Next very important information is that you need to know your class, because for most bosses you need to do specific type of CC skills to pass the mechanics. In case you don't know which ability does what, head over to your skill tab and click on the top left skill filter button and select whichever CC ability you want to use to know which skill applies that debuff to the enemy. Also, during the fight you may use any gear that you would like. I just want to mention that there exist very cheap and useful items such as the Kaya necklace, which increase your bag attack damage by 10%. You may also use the earrings that you can buy from the same vendor, named Mandolf, and he is located in Trent. But usually I just go with the Kaya necklace and notice a small increase in damage. Please note that this step is absolutely not necessary and I only brought it up in case you already have them. Last but not least, make sure to use your big buffs during the damage phases. By big buffs, I mean your E buffs, or on some classes it's on a different button, or sometimes even you have to put them into your quick slot bar. In my case for Suck Megu, I have to do the latter. You recognize this boss easily because they have a longer cooldown of several minutes. I see a lot of players not utilizing them, but they are extremely important, especially during the more annoying fights to potentially one cycle some bosses. Also, please note that each boss is able to get debuffed from you. Use this to your advantage as well. Anyway, this is all for the tips. Let's go over to each boss's mechanic. The first contender to fight is going to be always the striker. So make sure you know the mechanic in order to progress faster through Pit of Undying. CR Zar has a lot of frontal guard skills, so make sure you are always attacking him from behind. He also goes into long animations that have complete iframe. At the start of the fight, just damage him from behind as best as you can, and he should get a DP buff at around two thirds of his HP. At that point, you won't really damage him a lot, simply wait until he is glowing dark blue and is doing a charging attack. At which point you have to use two different CC abilities to remove his DP buff. You have to repeat these steps again when his HP drops to one third or below. Then you have to use two different CC skills than before to succeed and if you do, you can easily kill him. It is also possible to one cycle him if you damage him enough while he was doing one of his attacks that have long animation. Cassandra is the most annoying fight in my opinion. The fight might not be hard at all, but getting the mechanic to work properly requires some luck as well. I will explain in a second. Cassandra will fight you at the beginning with nothing to worry about, so just go ahead and damage her until she gets a DP buff, at which point she calls a companion, a big bear that will assist her in trying to knock you down. Now listen carefully, what you need to do when she summons the bear is to damage the bear, somewhere about 10% HP only. This makes that the bear goes back in the spawning area and gets to full HP once again. Only if he goes back to full life you may do the other part of the mechanic that is, you need to knock down Ascendra and stand in one line of the bear and her, such that when the bear is doing his rolling skill towards you, he will hit Ascendra as well, all the while she is lying on the ground from your knockdown already. The annoying part of this fight is that this does not always go as planned. 
As you will notice, you can only knock Asandra down when she's glowing white and doing some kind of charging attack. Only then you can knock her down and then pray to the PA gods that the knockdown happened before the bear rolls over her and make sure that you are already in line with the bear and Asandra at the same time. If you do that and everything goes as planned, then you will see Asandra being bound while lying on the floor, at which point she loses her DP buff and you can kill her. Failing to deal the fatal blurring during the allotted time just means that you need to do the same steps again. Good luck. Duran is a berserker and he is the easiest boss to kill once you know the mechanic. This is because if you play the fight correctly as intended, Duran will simply do nothing while you can blast all your damage on his back for additional back attack damage. When the match starts, simply get to the middle of the ring and wait until Duran performs two CC skills. You need to remember which type of CC skills he used and you need to use the same type of CC to him back in the same order. In this case, he used the knock back into knock down. which we return to him in the same order. As soon as the second skill hits him, he will simply kneel down and you are free to damage him for a while. Make sure that you go onto his back and use your buffs to then blast him as hard as you can. If you fail to kill him in one go, don't worry, you have to just repeat these steps again with the new CC skills the run will use on you. Now, note that in my example, being a succession megu, I do not have a knockback ability at all, but this is not a problem. You may simply use a floating ability to be counted as a knockback. In this case, we use Shift LMB for our floating skill. I'm sure that Gotaranza is probably your best friend and the main reason why you are watching this video, as he is the only boss that you need to know the mechanic in order to be able to kill him. All other bosses you can kill without knowing the mechanic, but they are much, much tankier and just annoying to deal with. Gorfarenza is also a berserker, just like Duran, but much harder. This also depends on your class though. I can tell you that on Success Magu, he is not a fun opponent to fight. At the beginning of the fight, just start to damage him. There is not yet anything to worry about, until you damage him to about 75% HP or lower, at which point he will put his weapons away and Please pay attention and get ready when he does that. This is because he will get a DP buff and you no longer deal a lot of damage. So don't use long animations anymore and you should be ready for his headbutt which he will use 5 times in succession against you. When he does, you have to get quickly onto his back and use a knockback or floating CC skill on him. Also make sure that you iframe right afterwards to dodge his response attack which usually chunks you quite a lot if you do not successfully dodge it. Additionally, keep yourself focused, because you need to correctly do this mechanic 4 out of 5 times. And if you don't, he will do an AoE ability that never stops until you are dead. Anyway, once you successfully hit his back with floating or knockback skills 4 out of 5 times, he will lose the DP buff and the fight continues just like normal. The next phase happens at 50 and 25% HP remaining each time again. If you happen to fail the mechanic and Gotharenza goes into his killing skill, simply abandon the quest and try again. It may be hard at first, but with some training, or maybe just a better class with faster animations, you can easily do this boss in one attempt. In my case with Succession Magu, her dodging and floating ability are quite slow, which is the main reason why this is a hard fight. If a class is also a slow class like Suck Magu, just try to use your dodge skills to get onto his back before he started his animation of the headbutt skill. When you get used to the timing, this fight will be much easier and you shouldn't have a hard time any longer. Also, if you fail the mechanic during the final phase, which means at 25% HP or lower, do not give up as you are still able to kill him if you chain damage skills, followed by your frontal guard abilities. By doing this, I was often able to kill him, even though I failed the mechanic in the first place. Kirill is an annoying but easy fight. She's basically a ranger and sorceress combined. Sounds annoying, right? 
Anyway, this fight is surprisingly easy and there is no mechanic to do in order to be able to kill her. She has almost only range abilities that ignore your super armor, so try to avoid them and either use ranged skills or get close and personal and attempt to hit her from her back. There is one good opportunity to take during the fight though. This is when she teleports to the middle of the arena and does Descendant Current. Time your dodging and damaging skills correctly as she will not iframe away until she did Descendant Current 3 times in a row. Make sure to abuse the timing and hit her from the back with your strongest skills. Karoxia will always be your final enemy for the daily pen quest. She is a guardian and depending on your class a very easy boss to fight. She has 3 phases. The first two are nothing to worry about, they will always trigger. And the final phase you do not want to trigger at all. To avoid the third phase, simply do not use CC abilities on her that are either floating or knocked back. You can still use them, but do not do them too often, especially in succession during any of the first or second phase and you should be fine. In my case, playing succession Megu, it is literally easy to avoid. But when I fought her in my awakening form, I had so many more CC abilities that gave me a hard time avoiding her final phase in which case Karoxia is getting a DP buff and have a lot of iframe animations and she is just annoying to deal with. If that happens to me I just restarted the fight by abandoning the quest and retrying. Anyway let me also point out a few things for the first and second phase. So basically when the fight starts just damage her as you normally would without using too many floating or knockbacks as I already mentioned. When you damage her enough she will enter her second phase which you notice her by holding her shield briefly in the air and going into a defensive state at which point you can only damage her from behind until she's dead. Please note that while you damage her from the front she absorbs all of your damage and will return it so try to avoid that and keep blasting her from behind only. If you don't see her too often she is an easy and fast fight to have. This is all the information that I have for you while doing your daily Pit of Undying quest. I hope that the information was useful to you and it will give you a much easier time to successfully complete with ease. In case you learned something new, please hit the like button as this would greatly help me and motivates to do more quality guides like these. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and stay safe. Langy out.